Hi and welcome back to my channel. In this video I'll be making the tail fairings for my ZX6R out of carbon fiber. I already made these molds for the prepreg application. I did not make a video of that, but if you would be interested to see something like this, let me know down below in the comments. Now let's begin the work. I am going to start the work by cutting out the carbon fiber. I am using XC130 210 gram prepreg and 450 gram prepreg. This cardboard template helps me to put down all the shapes I'll need. First what I will do is I will get down all the shapes in one go onto the carbon fiber. Then I start cutting out everything. To make it easier to cut out the holes, I am using this gasket cutting tool. It makes all circle shapes perfectly round and makes the job so much easier. I am saving the excess cuts to use them for a base layer. I definitely would not want to throw it out as this is an expensive material, so I think it's a good way to use it up. I started my first layer around the round shape so it would give a nice crisp edge around them. I continued laying down the rest of the mosaic pattern. Then I debug the first layer for about an hour. This process is quite important because it will be depend on how your parts of surface will look like. You can reuse your plastic bag if you are careful throughout the whole process. You want to avoid ripping or poking holes into the bag. If you can gently open the sides without cutting with the scissors, you can even reuse the seal and tape as well. While the first part is debulking, I jump to another section of the tailpiece. I am laying down the mosaic pattern again as I would like to have the same look throughout the whole bike. I really love doing this pattern, it takes ages to complete, but it helps me zone out and relax while I'm doing it. But once I'm finished with this job, I will be doing a different project and pattern. Following the debulking process, this one was a bit trickier because there were so many sharp edges on this mold. It needed some extra tension on those parts to make sure the perforated release film stuck flawlessly to every corner. I had to make sure the bag was in the right place as well so the debulking would be ideal. While this part was doing its job, I jumped back to the other bits and started laying down the shapes I had cut out earlier. Starting with the 210 gram prepreg, making sure there won't be any bridges so I get an even work. I am using prepreg laminating tool for this application, sourced from Easy Composites. You can also 3D print one if you have a printer. To stack up the layers around the circle, at this time I am using a 450 gram prepreg to bulk up the height. For this job, I am using the gasket cutter tool. Thank you. 
then I added a layer of 450 gram. Made sure all got into the edges and corners. Then I continued adding layers over and over until I reached the required thickness. In total, I used 3 layers of 210 gram and 1 layer of 450 gram pre prep. Before it goes into the oven to be cured, I debulk it overnight to make sure all the layers are compressed into each other perfectly. When I was done with that, I took off the perforated release film and replaced it with unperforated release film. At that moment it was really chilly in the room so I had to use a heat gun to help with the release film sticking to the surface. Afterward, I put everything into a fresh bag. I continued with the other part doing the same thing. After debulking, I lay down the three layers of 210 gram and one layer of 450 gram carbon fiber. Each piece of carbon fiber overlapped each other to strengthen the whole part. When I finished that, I debulked it for one day. Then I joined the split molds together by putting balls through. I double checked every single board to make sure they were tightened down properly and the mold joined together in the right places. To join the parts together, I overlaid the joints with 210 gram. This is going to help me keep the two pieces together. Each layer is wider than the previous one to make sure it overlaps. Next, I apply the unperforated release film. I kept it in place with some masking tape. I did not film it but I also used some masking tape around the edges. The purpose was to keep the resin within the part so it does not seep out between the gaps which would make the part surface have pinholes. I left it overnight to be ready for a bake the next day. I would always definitely leave it overnight to make sure that I have sealed the bag completely and it is airtight. I baked the part for 7 hours in total. I started for 2 hours at 60 degrees and then raised the temperature to 70 degrees for 3 hours. Then I ramped up for the final temperature to 120 degrees for 2 hours. After the time was up, I switched off the oven and let it cool in the ambience. The unwrapping is the most exciting part because I can finally see the fruits of my labor. I am using gloves because the edges are extremely sharp. It can cut through your skin like Freddy through your dreams. I have tried to release the part out of the mold gently. Right there I almost cut my finger if I wouldn't have been wearing a glove. It did not look serious on the video but it felt like it had almost gone through my glove. Here is a shot from a previous footage where I did not wear a glove and I cut my finger. 
I had a really nasty cut afterward. I couldn't use my finger for weeks. My girlfriend was not happy. The part turned out great. The surface does not have any pinholes or bridges. The edges and corners are nice and sharp. And now let's see the part I was most excited about. In these moments I always feel like a kid at bloody Christmas. Unfortunately, the bag won't be reusable. As soon as one heat cycle hits the bag, the plastic hardens up and gets kind of fragile. If the briefer cloth won't get soaked into resin, you should reuse it. As soon as I undone the bolts and cut through the masking tape, the mold released itself from the part. That was a huge relief for me. And at that moment, I knew it would be alright. And yes, it looks stunning. I was super pleased with it as a first attempt on this part. With this complex part, it's easier to commit mistakes. The side and the midsection did not have any pinholes, but the very tight corners had some unwanted pinholes. Only the end and the front had these issues. The reason was that I could not put enough pressure in those sections. The resin could not fill up all these edges. Many of you suggested a diamond blade to trim around the parts because I was using a HSS rotor bit in my earlier videos. But the reason was that these are freaking expensive and it's not even made of diamond, it's made of tungsten. This piece cost me 26 euros plus postage, so at the end it was 30 euros in total. After a very quick assembly, I fitted it to my 8 euro rotary drill. It was a straight through process. It's really easy to work with and cuts the carbon through like it was designed to do. I took off most of the excess carbon with this tungsten carbide disc and then I changed it over to a 49 cent sanding drum. Then I smoothed down the corners, tie bands and edges with that. After all that I started sanding down the whole part with 600 grits. I did not go super deep with the sanding, just wanted to scratch the top surface a little bit. The next step was to clean up the part and get it ready for the first coat of the body filler. I mixed up some MIPA P67S with some polyester thinner to have a body filler that seeps into the holes more easily. I have put one layer of body filler where most of the pinholes are. When the first layer got tacky, I apply one more thin layer onto the whole part and let it fully cure. Next, I had to bond a few pins and brackets to the under tray. I had to get the under tray ready for bonding the parts to it by sanding down the top layer of resin and carbon fiber. This way the bonding will be greater between the two parts. I cleaned it up with some mold cleaner and acetone. Made a small bracket out of carbon fiber to hold the lights in place. I used the original part to make a mold for that. Also, the rest of the pins and mounts are 3D printed. This way I can save some costs and time when I make these parts again. I used the Loctite EA9492 high temperature adhesive. In the future, I would like to run the exhaust under the tail so I want to have a heat resistant bond underneath. After curing the part at room temperature, I had to post cure the part to make sure the adhesive would work as it should. started sanding down the MIPA filler with 220 grit wet sandpaper then I switched over to a 400 grit and a 600 grit. After all, I got the parts ready for clear coating and cleaned everything with soapy water and acetone. 
I make some MIPA 2K HS like here. You can find all the links and products I used in this video down below in the description. Spray two coats in total of that over the parts. I let the part cure for 24 hours then. I'm very pleased with the result even if it's not perfect. The room had a 10 Celsius degree room temperature and so much dust. Unfortunately, winter has arrived. That made the clear spraying so much more difficult. These clear coated parts still need wet sanding and polishing to be finished. I'm going to show that in another video, but I was so excited to see how it looks on the bike, so I had to fit it on straight away. Everything fits together just like the original parts, but feels so much sturdier. All the bolt holes line up perfectly as well. Words cut deep, it's like a swan Making me better, you hotter than pepper, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You with a big step, who chasing a cheddar, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All of these women, they not on your level, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You like a mix of business and pleasure, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You a move, body giving seen a fuse I'm just saying I'm a mule, but you ain't even fly. I must say again how super happy I am with the result and can't wait to get the side fairings done very soon so make sure you keep an eye out for the next video. Thanks so much for watching, if you like this video please hit the like button and subscribe. See you in the next one.